Hello everyone, how you doing today? So if you haven't noticed or if you haven't uh, checked my Twitter account, I had a really, really rough week last week. I'm going to keep the personal details off of here for now and just update you if I need to, but things look like they are back on the men, so nobody worry. We're just taking it day at a time, seeing how it goes, but it's been improving. So you check my Twitter account if you want the actual details. That's not what the video is about. What the video about is about is one of the few good things that happened over last week and I wanted to share with you guys. And that is, I've played my very first game of Pathfinder. If you don't know what Pathfinder is, it's essentially Dungeons and Dragons. It kind of uses an old rule set and kind of reworks it and polishes it up and adds its own little things to create its own style of game. But it plays just like Dungeons and Dragons and it's like, it's, you know, fairly convertible from one system to the other. So, yeah, essentially it's Dungeons and Dragons. So, I've been a Critical Role fan for a little over two years now. Uh, back when they were still really early into their campaign, my friend Brent got me into it. And, yeah, I'm, uh, <laughs> that's where I am Thursday nights as I'm hanging out in that chat and watching, uh, watching what chaos they create. Love it, love it. And then... It, it kind of it's kind of like an old thing in me like I used to play Dungeons and Dragons in high school back when it was advanced Dungeons and Dragons and we didn't know how any of the rules worked but it seemed cool like we we were fighting dragons and we're you know super armored with magic and all this and like I don't think any of us knew how to really play the game I don't know I don't think any of us knew what the dice all did but hey it was fun uh so I've been really itching to get into a game, but no one around here plays anymore. No one I know anyway, and I feel really weird joining a stranger's game. And then there's my buddy Joe. Uh, Joe, who has done a few things to help me out in videos. He was Vegeta in my WMAC Masters review for TJTV. He also provided the Demolishor for my uh, Plastic Attic episode on the Revenge of the Fallen toy. Uh, he, might, he might be helping me with something else soon. Mm-hmm. So, uh, he's been trying to get me into one of his games for a long time now, but he runs weird games. You know, he, he's like, everyone's a goblin. I, I, I don't want to make a goblin. I, 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 like, I want to make my own character. I want to do my own thing. You know, you know for, for a long time now, I've had this in my head. Like, I've got a cool idea for, like, a druid character. I want to play a druid and I want to put a really weird twist on him, but it sounds like fun. It makes a really cool backstory for the DM to play with, and you know, like, you know, maybe it'll be just like super fun thing. And so, uh, after a while, he finally invites me to a game that his roommate is going to DM, and that game is just normal. Like, it's done so Joe's best friend and her wife can get in and try out Pathfinder. So as long as they were doing like this trial campaign, this little quick two session thing, uh, Joe invited me along too. I was like, is it goblins? No, no, no. We're not doing goblins this time. Just make your own character. You roll them up yourself and all that. Good. That's what I wanted. Like, I have these dice for a reason. So, okay. So if I'm third in line here, you know, like I've still got the Druid in mind. So who, like, what are the characters? What are the classes everyone else is playing? to see if this fits in. Uh, Alchemist and Druid. Well, plan B time, because uh, you try to you try to balance out in Dungeons and Dragons, you try to be what the party needs, or, you know, because like, frankly, like, you could build an all Druid team and be fine, and when it comes to battles, they could just lay waste to the battlefield with lightning bolts. But, you know, try to uh, try to talk somebody into things or try to negotiate with other people and you're hitting a hard wall. So, it, it, you know, so that's why you need the balance. So I've seen Druid campaigns that are just like run roughshod over the game. It depends. Um, depends on the type of game you're playing. But for this game, uh, I was wanting, since it's my first time in forever actually getting to play a game... I uh, wanted something simple, something that wasn't a whole lot to keep track of, or, you know, like key pools and uh, ingredients for spell casting, things like that. So I went with 
uh, a half elf rogue, and it's I've got you know if you're watching if you're a fan of Dungeons or a fan of Critical Role, there you know one of the main characters was a half elf rogue, you know Vaxel Dan, and I didn't want to just repeat that. I didn't want to just be your black cloak wearing thief character who calls himself a rogue. I wanted something different, so I patterned him a lot more like an archaeologist, more in the lines of like a, a Laura Croft adventurer, dungeoneer type. So you can't pick a pocket to save his life unless he absolutely has to, but uh, he can find, like, no trap escapes his sight, and he's really good at digging up ancient stuff with, ancient, with old languages, and he's really good at negotiating with people. So. I kind of patterned him around what I wanted the character to be rather than try to make a character whose stats were perfect and would kind of min-max everything out. So I'm playing the half-elf uh, archaeologist, for lack of a better term, Remor. And Remor is... I'll, I'll throw up a little picture I made. I found like a little anime avatar maker because I don't... I'm an artist, but I don't have any kind of tools. I don't have like a... Like, like, I don't have a, a tablet or anything that lets me draw out on a computer. So I I just kind of made, like, a little anime character creator just so I can have a profile picture of him. And I gave him a brown eye and I gave him a blue eye. And the blue eye is this super fancy monocle, so that eye looks really important. Uh, it's completely natural coloring. Uh, the, the monocle does absolutely nothing. It just makes it look like his eye is enchanted, so people think he does his job better. I know, I like little twists like that. So, uh, we, so okay, so there's there's technically four of us and the DM in the campaign. One of the, one of the potential players couldn't connect. So uh, the DM also threw in his own character who's like this, just a dwarf tank. Like literally, he's like a fully armored dwarf with two shields. So he is literally just a tank. He's just there to like soak hits for the party because most of us are beginners to Pathfinder. You know, I'm very up on terminology and how the game works thanks to the Critical Role, but there are differences from the games to games. And, you know, those were like level 15 characters or like level 12 characters when I started playing. We're playing level 5 to start off with. So rules are a little bit different. I can't do nearly as much as Vaxel Dan. So. The first campaign is your basic murder mystery in the tune of Pathfinder Dungeons and Dragons. So we're in this little dark corner of town where the guards are underpaid, not really good at what they do, and there are murders occurring at night. And the murders are all to uh, clerics who are walking alone uh, in the middle of the night as part of their rituals. Uh, all of them are from out of town and all of them were found with their hearts cut out. A little bit brutal. So, uh, two places to investigate is the local is the uh, local temple and the uh, local hostel where all of them were staying. So, uh, temple comes first, and uh, this is the fun. This is where shenanigans begin because we have to. Everyone does like a religion roll. So, if you're playing this. Uh, game you roll 20 sided for those not familiar with pathfinder dungeon dragons or whatever pretty much everything comes down to a 20 sided die and whatever you roll on that you add whatever plus or minuses you might have on your character sheet for those uh, those abilities and that's what your number is and whatever the number is determines exactly how well you did so uh, 20 sided die a one in tw you know a one or a 20 so roll knowledge religion one. This is basically my first roll of the game. I got a solid one. So I don't. So we get to the Temple of Saren Ray, and my character's immediate response is, "What's a Saren Ray?" It should have been like, "What's a temple?" But <laughs> so dice rolls like that tell you what your character is going to be. I, immediately, I know my character is not going to be the religious type, and that's part of the fun of it. He is, however, going to be the negotiator, because once we get inside, it's my ability to negotiate that gets us talking to everyone inside and get them to trust us enough to start giving us the information we need. So, uh, let's see, what is it? Diplomacy is a score. I have a plus eight in diplomacy, which means my minimum is like a nine, but usually if, it, if I roll a one, 
it's usually an automatic fail no matter what your score is. So technically my minimum is a 10. So yeah, it's you can pretty much talk to just about anybody to some extent. And I was proud of myself because it was my line of questioning that got us the info we wanted. Because my first my thought was, well, there are four trap there are four clerics from out of town. Uh, is there anyone else in town who worships Saren Ray who is from out of town? And there is one. So we immediately have our mark. We all go to the hostel, we get up, we find out what their room is, and here's where my character shines, because uh, in order to get into the door, it's another diplomacy roll, which was stupidly high. And I have advantage on diplomacy, which means I get to roll twice and take the best number. And my character's perception. Perception tells you what you notice around the world yourself. And perception in Dungeons & Dragons or Pathfinder is extremely important, because it's the difference between noticing that there is a giant spike pit right underneath your feet as you open the door, and opening the door and noticing there's nice curtains in the room. It's really important to be really perceptive, so it's a very vital thing. My character, uh, half-elves get a natural boost to, uh, uh, to perception. Uh, rogues are adept at perception, so I get another bonus, po bonus points in there. And uh, half-elf rogues get a... Uh, focus skill where one of our skills I can go uh, I want to be better at that and I went perception in that this means uh, my best perception is a 34 on a 20 sided die I can roll a 34 so roll perception to see if you notice anything else in the room 34 like, the kind of perception role where my character should, for just a moment, realize that he's being projected on a two-dimensional screen and his existence is nothing but a picture on a grid, and then it just snaps back to his own reality. Just for a second. Just for a second, he's that aware. But he notices someone else in the room, and then the other, he tells us what we need to know about what is going on and what might, what creature might be doing these killings in the middle of the night. So we have one alternative. We have to either... Well, we have two alternatives. We can either go to the abandoned shrine where this demon keeps taking bodies, or uh, we can set up an encounter and bait him out uh, with our cleric friend here. Well, rather than endanger... Well, we decide that it's probably better to bait the demon or whatever it is out so that we can actually uh, have the drop on him choose what the fight's going to be rather than going into his den where god knows there's like seven eight arch fiends just waiting for him hanging out there don't want to walk into that so we decided to bait him out and we didn't want to put the cleric in danger so someone comes up with the idea that let's just take his robes and we can just dress up one of us to be this character well the other two are the other you know the other two characters are female one is a cat folk so uh Obviously, he's not going to pass for the cleric. Uh, our other party member is a small dwarf, and the other one is a. I, I, I'm not familiar. I'm not familiar with the race that Joe's character is, but he's big. He's way bigger than this guy. So guess who's the only one in the party who could possibly be the dummy here? I feel so good about my choices. It's middle of the night. I'm dressed in the robes of Saren Ray. I've gone from not knowing what Saren Ray was to be to uh, acting as a worshiper and going on the uh, the dawn walk ritual that they go through, uh, baiting out this. Is, this is the one character in the party who's really good at stealth, and I'm the only one who can't make a stealth roll. But it does lure out the. Well, actually, we stumble upon another victim. Uh, we didn't get time to check it out because the killer was right there, bloody knife and heart in hand, and uh, the corpse comes back to life as a zombie. So, hey, we have an encounter. Awesome. So I actually get to fight in Dungeons & Dragons for the first time in forever. And it, this actually goes... The, it, the encounter itself goes fairly well at first. Um, it is a little bit slow because we do have some who aren't 
as familiar, like, I haven't played in a long time, but I am familiar with how the game works, so I'm deciding what my character's next thing is going to be before it's even my turn, and so, like, I'm, you know, I'm relatively, you know, I'm making sure that the rules are the way I think they are, but I'm fairly quick to my actions. Uh, our other two who aren't really that experienced or uh, kind of hanging back trying to figure out what their characters can do as their turns come up so it's a little bit slow so this encounter takes a lot longer than we thought it would um, but the zombie on the ground floor like uh, three of our party members Joe and the two girls focus on uh, this female half elf who is apparently the murderer up on the roofs in the up on the roofs in this alleyway and my character and the gnome get to focus on the zombie and rogue does what rogue does like the first thing the zombie does is he tries he's his as the corpse comes to life he tries to reach for his mace and i'm smart enough to go you know what i'm not going to just try to stab the zombie because he still gets his move that might not necessarily stop him so i kick the mace away so automatically i'm like cool that was a smart move that was a smart that was a smart move that diminished his attack immensely that makes him a very small threat and the fight with the zombie goes fairly well i get a good you know i i can you know my character is a rogue so i dart around him for to flank him and sneak attack which gives me like a huge damage bonus uh so my character spins around him zombie gets to attack as i pass him because that's a rule in the game i I jump, flip out of the way like a Power Ranger, get to my, get behind him, boop, in with a rapier, huge damage, and then the next turn, I don't, like, the next turn, whoop, finish him off. So, cool. It's my first game in forever, and I get the first kill. I'm so excited right now. I'm so happy. So, now the, tra now the task comes. I need to get up to the roof, because there's only one party member actually on the roof, actually able to engage this person, everyone else is just kind of, you know, the girls are kind of lobbing things at her from ground floor. So, uh, okay, I've still got my movement for this turn. So you can attack, and then you can move. You have two different, you know, you have a movement action and an attack action that you can do in a particular turn of Pathfinder. So, I, okay, let's move up the, okay, let me try to move up the wall. All right. 20 side to die. That's a seven. So my character gets to the wall, goes up, 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 and slides down. Great. So I have to wait till the next turn to give it another try. The gnome is going to give me a boost up, so that makes the roll easier. My character, for seeing things like this, also has a rope and grappling hook. So I Batman up the wall this time. It's still not a great roll, but it's good enough to get me to the ledge of the roof. So my turn's up, but... and. Elf girl fries me, by the way, while I'm hanging on the corner of the roof. So I have to wait till the next turn before I can do anything. So uh, one of our party members throws me a potion, which is ghoul. That uses up one of my actions, though. So now I have to use my last action just to get up. But I'm on the edge of the roof, so all I have to do is roll a five on a 20-sided die. I slip off the rope. The problem is the dwarf was on the rope behind me. So I slip off the rope. Uh, I hit the gnome on the way down. We both smash back into the floor. I take almost as much damage as the potion granted me. So uh, we're both out of it. He makes it up during his next action. So, he's, so at least someone else is up there. And those two do finish off the elf, at least temporarily. And, but before that happens, I get one last turn. And I'm like, you know what? She seems like she's pretty close. Even if I try to climb up now, I'm not going to amount to much in this conflict, in this encounter. So uh, the gnome botched a roll during an attack and dropped one of his shields down to the alley. So I had my character pick it up and try to lob the shield back up to him. So he's back to full. Roll again. That's a seven. Uh, the shield goes... Shoo, shoo, ting, 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 ting. 
And before I tried to throw this shield, I I took the holy symbol as part of my costume to Saren Rain. I gotta give it a kiss for good luck. And then, whoo! So my character turns around and throws the symbol across the alley. So in about the span of six hours, I learned about Saren Ray. I became a worshiper of Seven, Saren Ray, and then I renounced Saren Ray. I basically did a speed run of Saren Ray. But eventually, the, no, the, 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 uh, the gnome knocks her off the roofs onto the other side of the buildings, out of range and out of the, the encounter. So we did win. I got, the, I got the kill of the zombie, and that's pretty much where we left off. And... Uh, I don't know if I'm posting this on Tuesday or Thursday, but our next session is on Tuesday, and that's when we pick up uh, the campaign. What's really doing the murderings, where this flying demon comes in ha comes into play, what's at the shrine, uh, uh, why uh, someone who apparently wasn't a traveler from out of town somehow got killed, even though it may not fit the MO, and I'm really excited for it. You know, after the last week, it's been... You know, after the last week has been just so stressful and so much chaos going on, I'm really looking forward to just stepping into somebody else's boots and spending three, maybe four hours pretending I'm somebody else. You know, I understand why Dungeons & Dragons is such good escapism for a lot of people, because you are, you are literally spending your evening or afternoon or whenever as somebody else, and sometimes that's what you need to make it through the week. So... I just wanted to share that just like I'm happy that like my first time doing Pathfinder actually had you know one of those classic role playing moments you know it's like you're all you need to do is roll a 5 <laughs> all you have to do is roll a 5 you make it up on the roof and you get to start fighting again uh, I can't even make it up I can't even make it up my own rope my character need, I needed to put points in climbing like I uh, yeah, climbing is the thing that rogues are good at, and I didn't put any ranks in it. Like, I literally, I've got one. <laughs> so, yeah. Didn't go well. But, Dungeons and Dragons made of those moments. What makes it fun? The unpredictability and the silly stuff that happens just because the dice didn't roll your way. And that's the way I want it. So, you know, I'm happy to have the story. So, uh, we are playing again on Tuesday. And I'm recording this on Sunday, so I don't know uh, when you're actually going to see it. So we might have already played the next session. But I'm I'm really looking forward to playing as Remor again. And if we make a long RPG out of this, if we make this like a weekly thing that we do after this tryout campaign, I need to tweak him. Because he either needs long range stuff or he needs to actually be able to climb a rope. Because an adventurer who can't climb is... Uh, not a whole lot of an adventurer now that I think about it. But hey, that's Dungeons and Dragons, or in this case, that's Pathfinder.